in an earlier lecture, I have given the basics of matrix smelting and illustrated one example. In this lecture, what I am going to do, what exercises I am going to do today that I will be uh, presenting before you. So, here are the exercises that we will be taking today in matrix smelting. Now, problem 1 and A, B, C, D part a similar we have done in an earlier lecture and here uh, these A, B, C, D part they are given for your practice. Well, uh, you can see and you can read and uh, you can see that you can do these problems also. I am not going to read this problem because I already done similar type of problem in a previous lecture. So, you can see and try to solve this problem. Uh, problem number 2, it says a copper ore has the following proximate analysis. Now, proximate analysis on various organisms I have said, it represents the analysis of minerals. So, it has Cu2S, FeS2 and SiO2. It is smelted in a reverberatory furnace using pure limestone as a flux. The slag has 36 percent FeO and 21 percent calcium oxide. Calculate per 1000 kg of ore weight of limestone, slag and mat. Problem 3, a copper smelter, it smelts the ore of the following composition. Copper, iron, sulphur, SiO2, calcium oxide, Al2O3, H2O, all their compositions are given. Limestone of composition 94 percent calcium carbonate and 6 percent SiO2 is used and it is one fifth of the weight of the ore. Now, remember as in the basics of matrix smelting, we have said always that flux is used. Now, flux here is a limestone and generally in most of the metal extraction industry, the limestone is used as a flux. And limestone, uh, it has calcium carbonate and SiO2. Normally, it may have some Al2O3 also, but mostly it is calcium carbonate. But when you heat, when the heat is supplied from outside, then calcium carbonate is used. But if heat is not supplied from outside, or there is a problem with the heat management, then lime is used because calcium carbonate is highly endothermic process. So, here well we are using a limestone and of this composition. The coke is 12 percent of the ore and its ultimate analysis is given. It contains all carbon, SiO2, Al2, 3 iron and so on. Now, the important here due to smelting, 25 percent of the total sulphur charge is oxidized as CO2, as SO2. That means, 75 percent is remaining in the system in the form of whatever mat or whatever the case may be. The analysis of flue gas volume percent dry, SO2 this one, CO2, O2 and nitrogen. Again, mind you, this is a dry analysis and as I have said repeatedly, though I have mentioned here volume percent, but the volume of gases are always given on volume basis. Very, very uh, in a very few, I do not remember any case where weight percent is given. However, you can give in weight percent, but volume percent is a, is, is a common way of giving the analysis of flue gases. So, that is given, no copper is lost in slag and ignore the flue dust. That means, whatever element they are carrying in the flue dust, you ignore those things. Determine per 1000 kg of ore, the weight of mat and its grade. B weight and composition of slag, C volume of gases dry calculated from sulphur and carbon content that is you have to do from both the balances and D cubic meter of air. So, these are the problems that I will be uh, doing for you today and plus one problem I will illustrate during the lecture on heat balance of this smelting operation and I will go little in detail. So, we will proceed to the solution of this problem. So, here the problem 1, I, already, I, I have already a similar type of problem was solved in a previous lecture to this. So, I will not be taking problem 1, you try and uh, get the solution. Problem number 2, now problem number 2 says this is a ore of a sort of copper ore is smelted, composition is given and uh, you have to find out the weight of limestone, slag and mat. So, let us take the basis of calculation, say basis of calculation is 1000 kg ore concentrate, 
1000 kg ore concentrate. This is the basis. It is always good to write in the beginning you, you rather clarify the basis of your calculation. You may take 1000 kg basis, you may take 1 kg basis, you can take 1 ton, whatever you like. The, it is absolutely your choice. Now, the problem says or according to the problem and if you know little bit uh, uh, this uh, uh, chemistry of mat smelting as I have said, then you can e easily recognize that the slag in this particular problem, it will consist of, it will consist of FeO plus CaO and plus SiO2. No other component will be entering into the slag because the problem clearly says that uh, no copper is lost anywhere and so on. So, the slag will have only this particular thing. So, that means the SiO2 of the charge say whatever you have SiO2 of the charge has to be available in the slag, has to be available in the slag because nowhere SiO2 is, uh, is rather entering anywhere, it has to go to slag. The SiO2 of the charge has to be available in slag and we are given with the FeO and CO percent. So, we can immediately write down that percent SiO2 in slag, percent SiO2 in slag that will be equal to 100 minus 36 plus 21 that will be equal to 43 percent. So, once you know the SiO2 percent, then we can perform SiO2 balance, we can perform SiO2 balance and let us say here uh, let x kg is weight of slag is weight of slag. Now, here I will have to tell you something that uh, little bit of chemistry of mat smelting it is important to know because unless you know uh, what is the chemistry, how the slag form, what slag cons consists of and so on, it will be slightly difficult to solve this problem because the problem only says uh, the composition of FeO and CO is given. Now, here you must know seeing this problem, seeing the analysis, reading the problem, you must be able to judge judiciously, logically what slag can have. So, the slag can have FeO, CO and SiO2 and, and that is the clue to solve this particular problem. That is what I think, uh, I thought I will tell you that the chemistry of matrix melting is very important to know how the matrix melting is commencing, what are the inputs, how the inputs are entering into the uh, system and how they are exiting the system. For example, SiO2, L2O3, calcium oxide, whatever you charge, they all will be available in the slag as it is, no reaction is going to take place. So, that is an important thing over there, but copper it may go as Cu 2 S at Cu O also depends on the problem. Iron it may go as Fe S also as Fe O also or Fe 2 O 3 or Fe 3 O 4 also. So, these two elements say iron and copper one has to be careful while solving this problem because depending on what is given in the problem, the copper may enter into the slag as Cu O or it may enter into the mat. Similarly, iron it may enter into the mat as Fe S or it may also enter into slag as FeO or Fe 3 4 depending upon the uh, statement of the problem. But as regard SiO 2, Al 2 3, calcium oxide, MgO whatever these are present, they all of them they transfer to the slag. So, that point to that extent it is it is required to know, uh, we should also understand why this happens because SiO 2, Al 2 3 they are very very high melting point and there is no reaction as such occurs with either copper or uh, iron or so on. So, that is an important because the problem says FeO and CO, I am straight away using SiO2 because SiO2 cannot go anywhere except in the slag. So, that is an important thing. So, now let x kg is the weight of the slag. So, I have to do the uh, material balance that says 240 that is equal to 0 0.43 x. So, I can immediately find off here x that will be equal to 558.1 kg and this is the weight of slag as the answer. Now, 
Once I know the weight of slag, I can immediately find out the weight of limestone. Now, weight of limestone would be, I think you can, you can tell me yourself, weight of limestone, how you are going to solve? You will find out the calcium oxide in the slag. You cannot find out calcium oxide from anywhere because the input says only 95 percent or whatever percent is there. The input says uh, about no, the, the input says nothing about the limestone. It's a pure limestone. So whatever calcium oxide will there, it will transfer into the slag. So weight of limestone you can find out because once you know the weight of the slag, then it will be 558.1 into 0.21 upon 56 into 100 that comes out to be equal to 209.3 kg. This is the weight of limestone. Now, here as I said C A I am using C A carbon is 12, oxygen is uh, 16 and C A is 40. So, this is what the atomic weights I have used. Now, then you have to find out weight of mat weight of mat. Now, the problem says no copper loss in slag, no loss of copper in slag, no loss of copper in slag. That is one, that is all copper will enter into the mat. Now, you could have argued sir, why we cannot calculate first the amount of mat first then slag and then limestone. No, you can, you will not be able to calculate because you do not know how much amount of iron is entering into slag because iron is getting divided here between mat and the slag. So, first you have to calculate the amount of slag so that you know what is the amount of iron that is into entering into the slag. Then you will do the iron balance and then you can find out the so called FES. So, that is where. So, no loss of copper in the slag. So, mat will consist of Cu2S plus FES. So, immediately we can calculate amount of Cu2S that will be 200 kilogram. Now, we have to do iron balance. Now, we have to perform iron balance and from the iron balance we can say, say iron in copper ore that will be equal to iron in slag. plus iron in mat. That is what you want to know, rest everything is known to you. So, if you do this thing, uh, then the x which is the amount of iron, if I take rather uh, x is the amount of uh, iron in mat, then it will come 104.7 kg and from here I can take or I can calculate F E S would be 165 kg. So, weight of mat, weight of mat that would be equal to you to 8 both of them and you will get the answer 365 kg. So, that is how you will be calculating the problem number 2. So, uh, the, the, the tips is here is only that you should understand chemistry of mat smelting very well in order to try this particular problem. So, that is an important thing over here. Now, let us take now the problem number 3. Now, problem number 3 again we take basis. The basis of calculation is 1000 kg ore concentrate, 1000 kg ore concentrate. Now, what is say if I take 1000 kg ore concentrate, then I write now whatever is given, say I am putting now copper that is equal to 100 kg, iron 300 kg, input I am writing, sulphur say 100 kg, SiO2 330 kg calcium oxide 70 kg, Al 2 O 3 equal to 40 
and H 2 O that is equal to 60. Now, the problem further says that the limestone this is the this I will put ore concentrate ore concentrate in kg. Now, limestone is one fifth of the weight of the ore. So, the limestone I am straight away writing calcium carbonate that will be equal to 188 kg and SiO2 that will be 12 kg that is what it says in the problem. Now, as regards a coke is also charged this is the limestone this is the limestone which is one which is the one fifth of the weight of the ore. Uh, now, coke is also being charged say coke is 12 percent of the weight of the ore that is 120 kg. So, I am straight away writing coke carbon that is equal to 98.4 kg SiO 2 9.6 kg Al 2 3 6.0 iron 2.4 sulfur 2.4 and H 2 O that is equal to 1.2 and this is the coke. So, I just converted the percent into the kg. Now, the problem further says the two important things first is that so, the problem says no copper is lost in the slag, no copper is lost in slag that is the point number 1. Point number 2 it says that 25 percent of sulfur, 25 percent of sulfur is oxidized to SO2 is oxidized to SO2. These are the two important statement of the problem which will help us to solve the problem. Now, the first we have to calculate weight of MET and its grade. So, the first thing that we have to calculate that is the problem 3 A part we have to calculate weight of MET and grade. So, for weight of MET I will be proceeding this way say sulfur in ore sulfur in ore plus sulfur in coke that is equal to sulfur in gas plus sulfur in mat. What I am trying to find out first of all I am trying to find out the what is the total amount of sulfur in the mat. So, if I do all this balance then I will be getting say sulfur in ore is 100 in coke it is 2.4, sulfur in gases that will be equal to 102.4 into 25 percent that is 1 by 4 plus sulfur in mat. So, I can find out from here sulfur in mat that will be equal to 76.8 kg. Now, since no copper is lost in the slag. So, copper in ore copper in ore that is equal to copper in mat no copper is lost is lost in the slag no copper in the fluid nothing else. So, whatever copper you are charging it will be entirely available in the mat I mean there is no doubt about it. So, now we can calculate say copper in mat the copper in mat that is equal to 100 kg as what we have calculated earlier total amount of copper it will transfer to the mat. So, therefore, amount of Cu 2 S that will be equal to 125 kg. You know how do I get I have to multiply by 160 divided by 128 then I will be getting 125 kg. Now, in order to calculate the weight of mat it must click to you at first at first you have to do the sulfur balance in this particular problem because you, you do not know how much amount of sulfur is entering into the mat because here copper and iron is given 
and some of the iron that may also go into slag. So, you cannot do anything unless you know how much amount of sulphur is entering into this slag. Now, I know the amount of sulphur. Now, I know Cu 2 S is, is around 125 kg. Now, here I have to find out that is how much amount of sulphur is this Cu 2 S. From that, I will find out the amount of sulphur which can go with iron and from there, I will find out the amount of FES. So, therefore, I will find out now sulphur combined with iron in mat, sulphur combined with iron in mat that will be equal to 76.8 minus 25 that is equal to 51.8 kg. Now, once I do this, now I know the amount of FES. So, amount of FES will be 51.8 into 88 upon 32 that is equal to 142.4 kg. So, now I got it, I have got it now. So, weight of mat, weight of mat equal to I have to add it that is 267.4 kg. Now, the problem also says you have to find out the grade of the mat. So, the grade you have to find out by weight of copper upon weight of mat. So, that will come 37.4 percent. So, this is what the answer for part A. That is how you will be calculating the part A answer. Now, another it says weight and composition of slag. So, what we have to find out weight and composition of slag. Weight and now it is straightforward. The slag will have SiO2, it will have Al2O3 as I have said in the beginning, it will have CaO and it will have FeO. All that you have to see that whatever iron which is in the mat that you have to subtract it and get it. So, straight away I will be writing SiO2 330 kg from ore concentrate, 12 from limestone and 9.6 from coke. So, that makes 351.6 they are all in kg. Al 2 3 whatever the source is in this problem 40 plus 6 that makes 46.0 calcium oxide 70 plus 105.3 because of the calcium or carbonate. So, that makes 175.3 FeO you have to calculate how much amount total iron subtract iron into the mat that iron will be in the slag make it 72 by 56 that will give you weight of FeO. So, that calculation you do it if you do that it will be coming 272.3 so, that is equal to 272.3. Now, the total is 800 45.2 and then the composition in terms of percentage say SiO2 is 41.6, Al2O3 is 5.5, CaO is 20.7 and FeO is 32.2. Now, you can further analyze this, but if you see the slag, the slag has SiO2 and uh, 41.6 and calcium oxide as 20.7. So, normally a term basicity is defined that is calcium oxide upon SiO2. Now, here the basicity is coming far less than 1 that means the slag is slightly acidic in character. However, a basic slag is not needed here because no refining reactions are going on. Therefore, acidic slag is done and you are seeing also that the basicity say in terms of CaO upon SiO2, it is also giving you the value less than 1 which means that the slag is highly acidic in character just an analysis of the result. So, that you are aware. Now, we have to calculate volume of gases say volume of gases.
volume of gases. Now, the volume of gases you have that you have to do from sulfur balance as well as from carbon balance. So, if I take sulfur balance, S balance if I do, I am doing in kg moles. So, sulfur balance is say 25.6 upon 32 that is equal to 0 0.9 upon 100 into z if z is the kg moles of gas then the value of z that is equal to 88.8 kg mole. This is the volume of gas as done by the uh, sulfur balance if you are interested in meter cube naturally say 88.8 into 22.4 that will be in meter cube well, you can convert it. Uh, now, if you do by carbon balance, now in the carbon balance, we can also do by carbon balance because in the flue gauge it is given CO2 that is equal to 11.4 percent. So, the source of CO2 is the carbon, carbon of coke as well as carbon of limestone also. So, if you do carbon balance, then it will be 1.88 plus 98.4 upon 12 that is equal to 11.4 upon 100 into let us say z dash and the value of z dash that is equal to 88.4 kg moles. There is a slight difference between the two sources that could be somewhere error in the analysis or whatever the case may be, but the values are very close. So, uh, you can say well. Uh, the sulfur balance and carbon balance both give more or less the same value. However, slight difference may arise due to the analysis or some other factor, but it is very, uh, it is very negligible. So, that is what here also you can convert into the cubic meter say 88.4 into 22.4 you have to help me how much the answer would be and this is the answer in meter cube. Now, the next thing you have to calculate cubic meter of air. Well, you know the amount of flue gas, how will you do it? Nitrogen from air, it is equal to nitrogen in flue gas. So, you will be doing this balance, say nitrogen from flue gas or nitrogen from air, whichever way you want to write first, that is equal to nitrogen in flue gas. Well, you have to do, you know the nitrogen in flue gas and nitrogen is given 78.5 percent, the kg moles of flue gas you know. So, if you do this balance, then nitrogen from air, uh, I am leaving it to you 69.55 kg moles. So, the amount of air will be 1972 meter cube at 1 atmosphere and 273 Kelvin. Now, these two problems I have tried to illustrate you the ways of solving the problems of material balance where you are required to solve weight of mat, weight of slag, weight of uh, gas, uh, cubic meter of air, volume of gases, percent composition blah blah all things you have and now you can see that it requires little bit of trick and little bit to read between the lines of the problem. Now, the next that I am going to illustrate is about a material come heat balance problem of the smelter. Now, for that I am going to write the problem. For example, a dry flotation concentrate, a dry flotation concentrate its analysis is given say copper 28 percent, iron 22 percent, sulfur 27 percent, SiO 2 15 percent, calcium oxide 6.5 percent and Al 2 O 3 is 1 percent. Normally, the concentrate has all these, all these say, uh, what should I say, impurity other than copper. This concentrate is smelted in a reverberatory smelter. 
is smelted well does not matter where, but a reverberatory cell smelter using air. In our problem it does not matter where you smelt all that you have to provide sufficient amount of heat. Now, I will illustrate the heat balance problem which is as follows. Say we have a dry flotation concentrate, a dry flotation concentrate whose composition is given say copper 26 percent, iron 22 percent, sulfur 27 percent, SiO 2 15 percent, CaO 6.5 percent and Al 2 3 1 percent. It is smelted in a smelter and it is said that 65 percent of sulfur, 65 percent of sulfur oxidizes to SO2, oxidizes to SO2 that means 35 percent it goes to the mat. Uh, the other product which form they are mat and slag that means the product of smelting they are mat, slag and gases. All copper is present in the system as CuFeS2. You have to perform material and heat balance, you have to perform material and heat balance and suggest ways to meet heat deficit, heat deficit if it exists in the problem. That means, you have to do heat balance and see whether heat output is more or heat input is more. So, that is what the problem. So, I will straight away start first of all the material balance. Since I have done material balance, so I will not do in detail material balance now, you can do yourself. The basis remember I am taking here 100 gram concentrate. Basis I am doing 100 gram concentrate remember. So, MET I will calculate Cu2S and FES that will be in gram mole Cu2S that will be 0 0.203, FES is 0 0.092, then slag another say this is the mat, another output is slag and slag consists of FeO, SiO2, Al2O3 and calcium oxide you calculate, I am writing down again as gram mole 0 0.3, 0 0.25, 0 0.0098 and 0 0.120. Now, in the analysis, if you sum total the analysis, it is not becoming 100 percent. So, you do not bother, consider rest 2.5 percent as the inert that means, they are not taking part in the reaction. So, now the third uh, product is the gases and the gases consist of SO2 which will be 0 0.548 I am writing in gram moles and nitrogen that is 2.616. So, this is the material balance. Now, we have to perform heat balance. So, heat balance first you have to calculate heat liberated. First you have to calculate heat liberated. Now, heat is being liberated in this reaction S plus O2 that is equal to SO2 and Fe plus half O2 that is equal to FeO. So, here say delta H naught F that is equal to minus 70,940 calorie per mole. Here it is minus 64,300 calorie per mole. 
So, I know the moles of a few and the moles of SO2 and there is no other source from where heat is liberated. So, total heat liberated total heat liberated that is equal to 58196 calorie. This is the amount of heat that is liberated during the smelting process. Now, first you have to calculate because all the copper is present at CuFeS2. So, some amount of heat will be taken by the uh, decomposition of CuFeS2 that means heat absorbed. So, heat of decomposition of CuFeS2, heat of decomposition of CuFeS2 that is equal to say we write down the reactions at 2 Cu FeS2 that is equal to Cu2S plus 2 FeS plus half S2 and here delta S not F for the decomposition of CuFeS2 that is equal to plus remember plus 38,975 calorie per mole of CuFeS2. So, if I calculate now heat of decomposition, so this heat of decomposition that will be 8526 calorie. You have to calculate CuFeS2 and then you can calculate this one. Now, this is the heat absorbed. You can also call as a heat output or whichever way you want to call that much heat will be subtracted from the heat input. Now, heat taken by the products, heat taken by products. Say one product is MET. Now, MET is Cu2S FeS. Now, you have to calculate for example, for Cu2S the temperature which we are considering that the products are discharged. Say all the products are discharged at 1500 Kelvin that is one thing is important. The products are discharged at 1500 Kelvin. So, while calculating the heat taken by MET which can say for example, Cu2S. So, you have to heat it from 298 to 1500 Kelvin. So, the first you have to add the heat of transformation, then latent heat of fusion and then the heat or sensible heat in rising its temperature from 298 to 1500 Kelvin. So, these values I did it that will be equal to 0 0.203. 920 plus 200 they are the heat for transformation, 2600 is the latent heat of fusion and 25070 is the heat required 298 to 1500 Kelvin. So, this becomes 5844 calorie. Similarly, it taken by FES that is equal to 0 0.092, same thing you have to do it. 570 plus 120 they are the transformation plus it has to have latent heat that much you have to supply plus that is the heat or sensible heat possessed by FES that will be equal to 2357. This is about the mat. Now, heat taken by slag, heat taken by slag. You are forming slag from 298 to 1500. So, again you have to incorporate transformation, phase transformation, latent heat of fusion and sensible heat. Say for example, for FeO we have 0 0.3, 7400 is a latent heat of fusion, there are no transformation involved plus 1500, 9110 that is the sensible heat in heating from 298 to 1500 Kelvin and this is equal to 6993 Kelvin. Now, about SiO2, you know SiO2 exists in two phases, crystallite and 3D mite. So, accordingly heat of transformation 175 plus 600 plus latent heat of fusion plus 16555 and that makes 4983 calorie. Then calcium oxide that is equal to 0 0.12, 9 
19000 plus 14840 that is equal to 4061 calorie. Similarly, L 2 3 that will be equal to 0 0.0098 into 25700 plus 33360 that is equal to 579. So, what I mean you have to while calculating those heat taken by the product you are heating from 298 to that particular temperature. So, you have to add all heat which is required say heat of transformation, latent heat of fusion, phase change and then the sensible heat. And now heat taken by gases. So, SO2 that is 0 0.548 they are the moles and that is 14840. Now, this 14840 is the sensible heat in rising the temperature of SO2 from 298 to 1500 Kelvin. That is, this is the value of H 1500 minus H 298. That is equal to 8132. That of nitrogen that is equal to 2.616 into 9110 that is equal to 23832. So, if I sum total all that is heat absorbed by CuFeS2, heat taken by mat, heat taken by slag and heat taken by the gases if I do total it comes 65307 calorie and I want to add here 10 percent heat loss of the heat output. So, that will be 6 five three zero. So, the total heat out required that is 71837 calorie. Now, my objective is to illustrate what to do when there is a heat deficit. So, you are seeing now heat deficit in this particular problem heat deficit that is equal to 71837 minus 58196. So, heat deficit is around 30, 13,640 calorie per 100 gram of concentrate. So, now I want to illustrate what could be done in order to meet this deficit. Now, there are several ways. Now, ways one way is preheating the air, is the preheat of air naturally the question comes to what temperature we should preheat. Second burning of natural gas, burning of natural gas. You burn extra amount of natural gas provide extra calorie and third way is oxygen enrichment. Say my objective of this problem is to illustrate these three mechanism which can be used to supply the additional amount of heat. Now, seeing about the preheating of air, say the important is how much temperature, at what temperature you will preheat the air. So, A required is preheat temperature, required is preheat temperature. How will you calculate now preheat temperature? This is often an industrial problem. Well, you can suggest you preheat the air the manager will ask you what is the temperature I should keep it. So, straight away M C P delta T that is equal to 13640 that is the heat deficit. So, I know now delta T that is equal to 13640 upon I am telling you what is 7.5 into 3.311 a 3.311 is the amount of air is the amount of air because you know the amount of nitrogen in air we know 2.616 divided by 0 0.79 that will give you the amount of air and 7.5 I have taken this is the average specific heat of air in calorie per gram mole that is what the specific heat of air uh, within temperature range 1000 degree Celsius. So, for accurate you can take the C p of oxygen, C p of nitrogen. So, this delta T value 
that is coming equal to 549 degree Celsius, then T preheat temperature will be 549 plus 25. So, that will be 574 degree Celsius. So, that is that makes the suggestion with a quantification of the value of the temperature that is required. Now, another option that I have said by burning natural gas, second option by burning natural gas, by burning natural gas. So, by burning natural gas, uh, suppose I take methane. Now, methane it liberates heat. Say each mole of methane, each mole of methane, it liberates 191750 calorie heat. But you lose also heat because on combustion of methane, you are producing CO2, H2O, and nitrogen. They will be heated up. So, the reaction which will write down CH4 plus 2 O2 plus 3.76 N2 that will be equal to CO2 plus 2 H2O plus 7.52 N2. So, now I will say the heat loss is because the heat will be carried by this, this, this that will not be available to meet the deficit. So, the heat losses. Heat losses will be CO2 1 into 14470 plus 2 into 11405 plus 7.52 into 9110. Now, this 14470 is the H 1500 minus H298 for CO2. This is for CO2 this is for H2O and this is for nitrogen as we have used earlier. So, total amount of heat which these products will take that will be equal to 105.787 calorie. So, heat available, heat available would be if you subtract this heat from this heat, so heat available will be 85. 963 calorie per mole, calorie per mole. So, now what is required? So, how much methane will be required? 13640 is the heat deficit, available is 85963 when you combust 1 mole of CH4, then we require 0.16 mole CH4 to meet the deficit and that will be equal to 35.8 meter cube remember per ton of concentrate, per ton of concentrate. So, now you know you have the second option. If you have no option to preheat the air, you try for the natural gas and approximately you will needing around 35.8 meter cube per ton concentrate. Now, my dear friend, remember, now your the gases will not be comprised of SO2 and N2, but it will be comprised of CO2 and some additional amount of N2 because you are using now methane along with the air. So, you have to recalculate the composition to see that your process runs. So, the exit gas now, exit gas now will comprise of SO2, CO2, H2O and additional H2O to that what we have calculated earlier. So, SO2 there is no change. CO2 yes, it will be added 0.160, H2O will be 0 0.30 and nitrogen will be say 2.616 earlier plus 0 0.120 you are adding now that has become 3.816 and now the total moles of gas is 4.844 mind you per 100 gram of concentrate. So, the percentage they are in kg moles, now percent would be 11.31, 3.30, 6.60 and 78.79 and that makes 100 percent. So, that is about the second option.
Now, third option that I said the enriching the air with oxygen. Now, when you enrich the oxygen air, that means you are reducing the amount of nitrogen. So, what we have to do say reducing now option number 3 oxygen enrichment, how much that is the question will be asked. So, reducing the heat loss, reducing the heat loss in nitrogen because nitrogen was carrying certain amount of heat and that heat was carried away by nitrogen was 223,832 if you see my real calculation. If I subtract from here heat deficit that is 13640, then I require to reduce the heat by 10192 calorie. That means, I will reduce the nitrogen and increase the oxygen. So, now how much amount of nitrogen will require if I want the nitrogen should carry this much amount of heat. So, this much amount of heat, this much of heat will be contained in 10192 upon 9110 that is 1.19 moles of nitrogen, 1.19 moles of nitrogen now would be required as compared to earlier when I was not using uh, oxygen enrichment, I was requiring 2.616, you remember earlier calculation. Now, if I use 1.19 moles of nitrogen, I will be meeting the deficit. Now, in order to do that, what will I have to do? I have to calculate now the enriched air, the enriched air will contain, now corresponding to 2.616. I have to calculate the amount of oxygen. So, we will contain now 0 0.695 upon 0 0.695 plus 1.19 into 100. So, the oxygen enrichment will be 36.9 percent. So, so I will be requiring now oxygen from air, I will require now oxygen from air that will be equal to 1.19 into 21 upon 79, that will be 0 0.316 moles of oxygen, that will be equal to 85 meter cube per ton of concentrate, per ton of concentrate. So, this will be the per ton of concentrate. Now, I can calculate now SO2 in the exit gas, SO2 in exit gas that will be definitely less, that will be equal to 0 0.548 into 100 upon 0 0.548 plus 1.19 that is equal to 31.5 percent and rest will be nitrogen. So, what I have done in this particular problem? I have suggested you that these are the three options from where you can meet the heat deficit, preheating of the air, oxygen enrichment and use of the fuel. These are the three options which are available to you for meeting the uh, heat deficit and I have illustrated that well each of the option has this particular requirement. Now, what is to be done? Now, here comes the management, here comes the uh, availability of the facilities that also you have to keep in mind. If suppose you are able to preheat the air up to the temperature, you can install a preheater, well then you can do that because all that is required, they are the three independent technologies. Now, which technology will be able to diffuse into your plant? Economically, it will be decided by several factors and one of the factor is that what will be the return on investment that you are going to put because each technology requires investment. And the important thing is that you can suggest any of the thing, but then ultimately that technology will diffuse into the plant which has a payback period lower and return on investment higher that is the basic philosophy of economics for diffusion of the technology into the market. Thank you gentlemen.